Hello. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today to talk about uh, uh, patent risk mitigation in uh, the financial services world and uh, to talk about also trends that uh, are concerning around how um, patent assertion entities and to a lesser extent operating companies uh, are increasingly uh, utilizing litigation uh, in the financial services world um, in proprietary technology, but more importantly for today's discussion in open source technology to, uh, to slow or stall the progress of Linux and to, to, uh, to capitalize on, uh, on the, uh, the increasing use of, uh, of open source technology in banking and uh, financial services in general. Um, I think one of the key points that I wanted to make is that we've seen a, an evolution. This has happened in, in the auto sector, which has really reclaimed its, uh, its technology uh, um, leadership um, and identity as technology centric companies to, and, uh, and also in banking and financial services, um, an increasing move toward, uh, toward uh, bulking up uh, talent that uh, in the development space inside banks and financial services companies, uh, such that there's a, a shift to, uh, to actually become technology, more technology centric and to control the technology uh, roadmap for um, their uh, their products and services going forward, and what this has meant is that as op more open source softwares come in, more more coders are hired, more people who are capable of, of supporting um, technology development and uh, and delivering solutions uh, are part of the team at uh, banks and and other fintech companies. Uh, we're seeing. Um, uh, patent assertion entities in particular become more opportunistic about uh, utilizing patents um, that typically are purchased from uh, operating companies uh, and stockpiled for the sole and exclusive purpose of, uh, of monetization. Uh, we're seeing those companies become more opportunistically interested in, uh, in uh, um, monetizing through litigation and uh, pre-litigation assertion against uh, banks uh, and financial services companies. And so uh, this trend is something that's troubling and we'll talk about uh, um, how it's evolved. Um, uh, what I also wanted to do is, is talk about OIN in the context of, uh, of these, this evolution in financial services, talk about kind of how we've evolved and what our goals have been since our founding in 05, IBM, Red Hat, SUSE, uh, NEC, Sony, uh, and Philips were the original founding members. Um, and then later in 13, uh, Google came in as a founding funding member uh, and, uh, and Toyota as a full funding member in 2016. Uh, the purpose of OIN's original formation was to deal with uh, operating company risk associated with uh, um, Linux and open source technology. Um, there's been a, an evolution over time as more and more capital has gone into uh, speculative acquisition of, uh, of patents uh, such that the, uh, as more and more uh, operating companies have become aware of their, their need to use open source, there's been less of a focus on operating companies litigating, but uh, these operating companies have been involved in uh, in selling their patents, um, recognizing that they were no longer capable of using those patents to be able to create differentiation in an increasingly open source centric world. Uh, and so uh, the problem and uh, has shifted and OIN has evolved uh, during that time as well. Um, and as I said, OIN was formed uh, to provide a free license to and really encourage companies to adopt a basic notion that where we collaborate, where we need to build on each other's ideas in the core of open source, uh, that we don't sue each other. And rather we engage in a, uh, a cross license where any patents that, uh, that are held by any operating company uh, is uh, that, that corpus of patents is subject to cross license and, uh, and the neutralization of uh, potential risk associated with litigation. And as I said, those those patents, to some degree, have uh, have 
that were or did read on, on open source functionality um, before becoming participants in the OAN community. Um, those patents were sold off and they not only from, uh, from uh, big tech companies, but from all manner of, of entities that, uh, whether it's universities um, or, or uh, uh, patent holding companies, patents are moving around and, uh, and being increasingly used to be able to create disruption uh, around uh, uh, FinTech uh, and the open source uh, technologies that they've adopted to support their products and services. Um, nearly 100 banks and financial services have joined OIN to be able to support patent non-aggression and agree to this basic concept of uh, cross-license uh, to neutralize risk of court uh, patents held that read on core open source technology. Barclays, Royal Bank of Canada, um, um, uh, Sumitomo Mitsui, Tencent, and Financial, TD Bank, Bank of America, Wells, NatWest, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, UnionPay, Truist, and, and many other institutions are part of this group of financial services licensees uh, that are now part of the OAN community, uh, which is great and uh, which is very important. And more and more companies all the time are participating and we welcome um, uh, basically having the full complement of companies that are present in, in Finos and its community and more broadly in financial services for those companies to all participate in this free license uh, where they gain access to the cross license and the neutralization of risk from other operating companies. Um, and, uh, and we also, uh, uh, in addition to reducing risk there, we're also focused on um, on non-practicing entities or patent assertion entities and how we can deal with risk associated with those entities. And Unified Patents has helped us um, uh, over the last four years in dealing with that risk. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, our funding and founding member uh, and have uh, been joined by the Linux Foundation, uh, Meta, Microsoft and IBM uh, as early founders of, uh, of the open source zone um, that's designed to deter non-practicing or patent assertion entities from monetizing poor quality patents uh, uh, that relate to open source technology. Um, OIN works in a number of different ways um, to deal with operating company and non-practicing entity or patent assertion entity risk uh, to financial services sector and, and beyond. Um, we have been involved in doing this, as, as you saw, from 2015, um, and we provided uh, a very significant level of support in addition to the cross-license uh, to entities. Um, and it's, I think, also important to talk about the fact that entities like RPX, which is an anti-PAE uh, organization that also is a data management, data collection organization, Lot Network, which is an anti-privateering uh, entity which helps to reduce patent risk uh, and allied security trust uh, are all uh, independently and in combination uh, designed to uh, to reduce patent risk associated with patent assertion entities. And as I said, Unified Patents is, a, is an entity that does uh, post-grant uh, re-examinations of, of patents that uh, should have never been granted and uh, has been very successful uh, for many different sectors, uh, in particular the open source sector, in uh, reducing patent risk by having uh, patents that uh, should have never been granted be invalidated. Um, uh, this is a feature of the American Vents Act uh, that allows for these kinds of, uh, of post-grant uh, challenges to be heard uh, and for patents to be, uh, to be invalidated. Um, and so uh, they are working in support of, uh, of, uh, of OIN and OIN's partners in reducing patent risk associated with open source and in financial services world. Um, what we've done uh, last year is we, we prepared a, uh, a report on the recent rise in financial services in open source and we examined uh, PAE uh, risk, the activities of PAEs, looked at the threat landscape and how it's evolved. Uh, and uh, we, we can make this available to anyone who would uh, like a copy of it. I'll talk about some aspects of, and of the conclusions that we drew from that, uh, 
that report. Um, and the data is drawn from Unified and, and RPX. Um, and so a lot of the data in this will come from 2022 and previous to that. Um, and, uh, but uh, I think it's, it's an important period because what we see is a, a very significant increase in financial services related litigation uh, um, as it pertains to open source technology being utilized. Um, we don't see this as a uh, as a as a as a, a threat uh, to to open source um, uh, necessarily, um, such that we would we would, that it's a deterrent or should be a deterrent to utilizing open source technology. Uh, we see open source technology as being absolutely critical to this space, um, but what we see is a need for uh, collaborative activity, uh, such as as OAN has been involved in leading. Uh, to be able to come together to be able to reduce risk either through cross-licensing to neutralize patents that are held by operating companies or, as I described, the, uh, the program that we've implemented uh, in the creation of the open source zone uh, that uh, Unified Patents is maintaining uh, since uh, um, over the last four years. Um, the... Uh, uh, growth of, uh, of litigation has been somewhat alarming uh, from 2020 to, to uh, when we collected this data in 2022. Uh, there's been more than 100% increase, uh, almost three times more than the next closest sector's growth, uh, which is mobile mobile communications and devices, uh, is the, the growth of, uh, of, of litigation and financial services related to open source technology. Um, and the rate of uh, open source patent litigation by NPEs or PAEs uh, rose by nearly 200% in 2022 and has continued to grow. And so um, this, is, uh, this is a trend that we would like to you know, be more active in abating. And uh, again, this is an area that uh, we know that uh, the people at Unified Patents are very, very focused on. Uh, in order to reduce uh, patent risk as for the financial services sector. Uh, authentication and token, uh, token authentication in particular, the most active technology areas targeted by PAEs uh, during that period. Uh, and uh, based on the select litigation that was identified, uh, top five areas were remote deposit capture, secure transactions, financial document access, storage and payment on uh, cards and mobile transactions. Uh, not all of these are purely open source related, but we want to provide a, a, a insights into where the litigation has been occurring. Uh, uh, Hadoop related technologies on the open source front uh, have been among the more important targets of PAEs and other technologies that are open source that are uh, that are being uh, a focus, a points of focus for patent assertion entities include the kernel, uh, OpenStack, CephFS, Docker, and Kafka. Uh, this just gives you a sense, uh, a point I made earlier, of where of, of how litigation is uh, is moving in terms of trends and uh, and where we see the. The most gross uh, examples of uh, of, uh, of uh, significant threat uh, and financial services uh, clearly is uh, is outpacing uh, all other uh, technology uh, areas in terms of the level of litigation by patent assertion entities. Um, again, uh, we see some areas even moving in a negative direction in terms of PAE activity, but but clearly uh, financial services is. Uh, uh, is notable for uh, for its appeal uh, to patent assertion entities uh, um, in terms of litigation related to open source technology. Um, when you look uh, uh, broadly, um, not just at financial services, but you look across the board, you see this this the numbers of uh, of PAE litigations. Uh, over the last five or six years. And clearly there's, there's significant growth among uh, PAEs that are listed here and, and others that file far fewer cases, uh, but, are, uh, but, are, but can be quite formidable because they're much better financed than many of the 
the uh, the entities that are listed here. So it's it's not just numeric strength in terms of the number of cases filed. It's the having particularly important patents that that where there there uh, there are fewer cases filed, but they're um, they're more difficult to uh, to thwart because the patents are of uh, in some cases of higher quality, in some cases uh, higher quality and um, held by better funded uh, PAEs uh, that can uh, stay the course when it comes to being able to uh, uh, pursue litigation. And they're not just looking as many of these entities are purely for uh, uh, settlements, but rather looking for, uh, or, and, and most, most of these will go for modest settlements when they do uh, look to, to sue. Um, but there are others um, uh, that are uh, that have a more significant uh, effect because of the their, their deep pockets and the threat that they represent. This just gives you a sense of some of the open source projects that um, that have received uh, attention uh, and support uh, from the uh, the Unified Patents Open Source Zone that that OAN is, is leading the funding of and coordinating uh, partners to come in. Uh, and, and continue to support as well. And so uh, there are many open source technologies here that, that are uh, household names like Android uh, and uh, Signal uh, uh, and others, SUSE. And so um, this is an important, uh, important trend that, uh, that we have uh, put into place through our relationships with Unified, and we, we are hopeful that this, uh, this continues out into the future. Uh, as a way of dealing with uh, with risk represented by operating companies suing uh, again across the board, but also specifically in financial services um, technology areas. Uh, what OIN does is it actively monitors what's going on in the market uh, in Linux and adjacent open source technologies. Uh, and we use uh, various means. We have obviously the partnership that I've talked extensively about thus far today uh, for Unified Patents and their work on our behalf uh, to uh, invalidate poor quality granted patents. Uh, we all also have a pre-issuance submission program, which is another program that was um, introduced and authored uh, by, uh, supported by the uh, American Vents Act. Um, this is uh, an ability, this creates an ability for us to identify prior art before patents are granted to allow the patent or enable the patents to, and the Patent Trademark Office to um, uh, either limit claim scope or to uh, reject patent applications outright. Uh, this, uh, this forces uh, a, in many, very many cases, a narrowing of claim scope uh, and creates a less damaging uh, patent if one ultimately does get granted uh, related to uh, open source technology and financial services world. And so we are very active in this program and have been active for uh, eight years uh, in, uh, in ensuring that uh, that poor quality applications uh, don't ultimately end up getting uh, granted as patents. Uh, we also work with uh, the community on, an, on a regular basis to identify prior art uh, and then share that prior art to, with companies that are at risk or in litigation um, to allow them to, uh, uh, to weaken the case against them uh, and, uh, and to be able to create a uh, uh, more level playing field um, and, uh, and a reduction of risk from uh, non-practicing entities uh, and operating companies alike. Uh, we promote the education uh, throughout the open source community uh, of, uh, of the various strategies that could be employed. And, uh, and as I described earlier, we encourage uh, um, not only uh, OIN participation in the cross license, but also um, uh, participation in LotNet, RPX, uh, uh, AST, and other initiatives that are designed to reduce risk associated with patent assertion entities, um, whether 
those other entities don't focus as we do acutely on the open source community, but nonetheless, they can do, they can perform, a, provide a, a, a service and a support uh, through their business, their models uh, to reduce uh, patent assertion entity risk, which is it was a natural complement to what OIN does. And so, as I described, the, the content um, that we have, have put together in this study, uh, drawn from RPX and Unified, who are partners of ours in various ways, um, and also from what we have uh, we have collected through our own activities in the community. A bit more on uh, on OIN. Uh, uh, OIN has over 3,800 members right now. Companies from uh, small startups to some of the largest patent holding companies in the world. Uh, those, those companies in total own, own over 3.3 million patents, um, which are subject to the cross license insofar as they read those patents read on open source functionality that's included in, in the scope that we, we have developed, which we call the Linux system definition. Uh, and uh, uh, in addition, we... Uh, uh, we have, uh, at our peak, owned 1,300 in patents and applications, which we spent $100 million acquiring. And any patents that we continue to own are subject to uh, license as well for free. Uh, when an individual becomes part of our community, they gain access to our patent portfolio and a royalty-free license to the patents that we own. Um, and uh, we are adding to the Linux system definition all the time. Uh, the current expansion uh, will add another uh, eight or 900 packages onto this, this list. And so we will be well over 4,000 packages that will be covered under the, the Linux system definition and uh, will serve as the, uh, for a functionality standpoint, will serve as the, the core of the cross-license obligation that all companies who participate in, uh, in OIN and its licensing community are obligated to, uh, to um, cross-license under. This gives you a sense of the, our focus on, on having global representation. Um, when I first came into this role 15 and a half years ago, uh, uh, North America and Europe represented the overwhelming majority of, uh, of participation, but with the growth of uh, Asia Pacific's uh, Asia Pacific companies and their their uh, their affinity for open source technology and their participation, we've been able to uh, create very significant inroads, particularly over the last seven years, uh, in expanding the number of licensees. Uh, yeah, throughout Asia, but uh, but particularly in uh, Japan, Korea, uh, China, and Taiwan, uh, and also at the same time, uh, we've been able to uh, establish a beachhead in uh, in South America and Central America in building uh, more uh, uh, a greater pool of companies uh, from around the the world to participate, and so. Um, we are very proud of the global uh, uh, appeal of the OAN license and global participation and have made significant efforts to ensure that this kind of radical representation is, uh, is a hallmark of the, the OAN license and the community. This just gives you an example of some of the, uh, uh, the member representation in different technology sectors. So obviously it's not just the success we're having in in financial services and bringing 100 plus companies into the to our community but it's the auto sector where we have incredibly strong representation globally it's networking it's software it's the internet it's telecom it's hardware companies and semiconductor companies and um, industrial companies that <clears throat> they now are increasingly looking to use software uh, and disintermediate um, uh, human intervention uh, to create safer environments uh, and more efficient environments for the operation of, uh, of large equipment, uh, heavy equipment. Uh, and then obviously the energy sector. I think if you look at the growth of the LF Energy as a project, I think we'll, we, we expect that this is going to be a very significant area going forward and a rich area for OIN uh, licensing uh, over the next five years. 
And I think one of the important things that I wanted to leave you with is that um, OAN lives within the slipstream of, uh, of major open source project management organizations like the Linux Foundation, Apache, uh, um, Mike Malinkovich's organization uh, as well. Um, because we are we're very focused on the important projects and making sure that we are connected with the um, the uh, the technology leadership and the the general managers and and executive directors of these really significant projects to ensure that we are including the really important open source technology that everyone needs to to use to be able to uh, implement uh uh innovation through uh, the, the adoption of open source code and so it's a uh, it's a very much uh, a very significant and explicit focus for us um and uh, you know clips's growth uh, over over recent years that's as it's moved to uh to its base of operations to um europe i think it's been very important and uh, and the the over overall the expansion of the linux foundation and other project management organizations, uh, the emergence of of, uh, of Open Atom, uh, we are leaving no stone unturned in terms of looking at uh, and for important technology that uh, we want to create a patent no-fly zone around uh, by expanding the Linux system definition. And this is an important part of our strategy, and it will remain so going forward. So. Uh, Thank you very much. And again, if anyone's interested in gaining access to uh, the uh, the report that I've been referencing throughout today's presentation, uh, we welcome the opportunity to share that with you. Uh, and uh, we look forward to welcoming uh, many of you that are not part of our community into our free community so that you can gain access to the benefits that, uh, that I've described today. And, uh, and feel greater comfort in adopting open source and incorporating it into your products and services. Thank you very much.